what what type of reactions? We'll start there. What type of reactions did you see off off the rip? Um, I'm gonna be honest, man. I'm seeing more more people say that they're kind of disappointed with the Drake album than I thought I would, Why and that, that was surprising surprise? to me. Why? Well, because um, well, let me say this. I think that people anticipated a different sounding album. I think people took Certified Lover Boy and anticipated a very R and B heavy album from Drake, and I think that was one of the things that people were kind of thrown off by. They thought that this was going to be a very R and B heavy album, heavy sound, um, and it wasn't. And um, I don't know why, because Drake already addressed that he would never do like an R and B album. He addressed that years ago. He said he would never do that. I don't know why fans are anticipating that, but surprised to see that because uh, I feel the opposite. I feel like this album was really good. I feel like minus maybe two or three tracks. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. And it's hard for, for me. It's hard for me not to like a Drake album just because I think that Drake makes the type of music that I think I can. You can really play anywhere. You can play in the house. You can play in the car. You know, what I mean, you can listen to, you know, on a flight. You could, you know, so it's hard for me not to like the album because a lot of his records have so much replay value. But minus two or three tracks on this album, I'm 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 liking it. Everything you said about Drake is what makes him a legend, <clears throat> and I agree. Mm-hmm. You can listen can listen to Drake in any setting by yourself with women, with mm-hmm. family, parties, crib, whatever. He's mm-hmm. great at that. He's probably the best artist at that. Right. Period in music. Mm-hmm. That does not make me like this album though, because the caliber of in which he did it on this album does not meet his standard. Explain. I'm only here to compare Drake to Drake and nobody else. And Drake right. is in another stratosphere, so I can only do that with him. Mm-hmm. To the caliber of the music Drake makes, this was subpar to me. Subpar? To Drake. Now, if anyone else put out this album, it would be great because Drake makes good music. Mm-hmm. It's never going to sit there and go, that is fucking the wackest thing I've ever heard in my life. Please don't ever play that again. Mm-hmm. He has a familiar voice. He's been around for a decade. We love his voice. When the shit comes on, it sounds good. I was talking with a friend of mine. I was halfway through the album. I didn't listen to it the night it came out. I waited. And she texted me and said, this is a parody album. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, this feels like a parody album to me. And I was like, all right, that's weird. And I kept that in my mind as I listened to the rest of it and I listened to it the second time. Mm -hmm. And then I texted her back and said, I completely agree with you, especially when looking in that lens in the back of your head. This feels like a Drake parody album. I know that sounds weird because Drake made it. Mm -hmm. It feels like he was trying to recreate other great Drake songs that have already happened. And they missed the mark from the great ones that already existed. It it felt like someone else was trying to make a Drake album. Mm -hmm. And I know that may not make sense to some people, but... I have said that I've had this conversation with a few people and they're like, yo, you don't need to explain it. I know exactly what you're talking about. It I felt like mean. someone was making a Drake album and they weren't Drake like yeah. because Drake has set the bar so high. That's why I'm comparing it to him in this, in this sense, because he just, I could almost go through the whole track list and compare it to a great song that already existed that it sounded like he was trying to recreate. Mm-hmm. So to me, it felt like, I don't want to use lazy because that's unfair, very unfair. But it just, it, it felt like, it almost felt like a Tory Lanez album. Like when Tory tries to do Drake all the time. It felt like Tory picked Drake beats and tried to rap and sing like Drake, <laughs> wow. which he always used to do. And again, when Tory did it, it wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and in Drake doing it here, it's not bad at all, but I can only compare him to him in that sense it missed the mark of all the greatness that he did. And I'm one of those people that, yo, don't go, you know, the, the whole line. If you want my old albums, mm-hmm. buy them type mm-hmm. shit. But in this sense, yeah, because you're trying to recreate the shit you already did so well. So you're saying that you don't feel like he raised the bar with this album at all. I don't think he raised the bar in his catalog at all. Okay. Is it great music? Am I going to listen to this again? You, of course. Am you, I going to play this around other people? Of fucking course. Right. You're just saying you're ready, you're, you're, you're ready for Drake to push push the bar higher. About everything. Song. Every one of Drake's friends look just like me. Okay. All That's of them. Good point. You can't joke on me when every last one of your friends looks just like me. Okay. Okay. You bring so, up some So time. I don't know if this is maybe some internal 
baggage that's maybe going on in the OVO camp that he's uh oh, now, 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 now he's now he's projecting his hate towards his own crew on me. Oh, you about to get me in, in trouble with what you just sound spicy. <laughs> I look like everyone in the OVO camp. I look like 40. I look like Noel. I look like that other uh, OVO Brian. I look like all of them. Like, why are you mad? Drake, that's Rory saying that. <laughs> that's Rory in case you need to, you know what I mean, respond. No, it's, it's, it's no beef. It, of course there's no beef. That's just right. funny in, in, in the same sentence. Well, yeah, no, it is. Yo, 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 it's Big Ant Mike back. Another edition of Urban Politicians TV, UPTV. Make sure you stay on your pivot at all times, man, and stand on business. Had to come tap in real quick and talk about this motherfucking Rory and Maul podcast episode that just hit number 12, Pim Dice. And I'm going to have all the links for the, to get to this content in the description box. So y'all go tap in the Rory and Maul podcast. But this right here, I put that other little clip at the end to show y'all after this critique. While some people will go, look at this a little way who be kind of in the know where Rory and, Ma, where Rory and Shet, uh, Drake have a little bit of history of like taking little jabs at each other and everything like that. The most recent one was when a breakup happened, of course. So people are going to say this because that nigga Rory is critiquing the fuck out the album for sure. And painting it in a more deep context than other people. Now, I'll tell y'all like this right here, bro. The album going to do what it do. I can't tell Drake how to make no music and how to execute an album or put an album out to the people because that motherfucker did like 600,000 sales or something in one week. To me, I don't even give a fuck about the numbers. I go off how the streets fucking with it, how the people talking about it. Is it trending or do I see your name in the captions and all that? They going to put album sales up on these albums. That's on y'all. I go about how the streets fucking with it. Are the hoes popping out? Are the hoes using the lyrics in their caption? Am I hearing it in niggas' cars? And in Drake case, I am. So I I judge that as how is it how is it hitting the people, but then I also go off of how I just fuck with the sound and what direction you went in. I can honestly say I see where Rory is coming from. Uh, Drake still is making certain songs that are catering to that time of being like an early 20 year old and things of that nature. Cause he went more in depth on this clip on the, uh, on this podcast, but I can't put the whole motherfucker up and just let it run through like that. Cause that, nah, I'm gonna break it down to the key pieces. But Rory is making certain points after I listened to the album and said like, okay, it seems like this is another song that Drake has made before. But I'm the type of nigga also, and I think they said this also, if it ain't broke, don't break it. This is what people like. Uh, a lot of times people want that old art, that artist to go back and touch it to their old flavor, their old style, their old creativity. Then sometimes some certain people are like, well, damn, I want to hear what you got going on right now. So it's one of those things. I can't say the whole album was a parody. No, I will say that. Like, I don't know if parody is the right word. Now, the videos, like the uh, the Too Sexy, of course, that was a little bit of a parody video, but it was entertaining. You got to live a little bit. You got to have fun, for sure. But at the end of the day, I feel like it's a great experience, but it's kind of like it's entertainment, too, bro. Like, everybody's going to play. The, the You have to downplay. Not downplay your age. You don't got to act childish. You don't got to be childish, but it, it's all art where, like, the art of your age is dope as fuck. Like, Drake ain't old. Drake's still a young nigga for sure. But the art, like, even the art of acting or doing film, a lot of actors, like my nigga BP told me earlier, nigga might be 20 years old or 21, but take a teenage role on a TV sitcom. Actors in movies, they might be 50 or 45, but they gonna play the role of a 30-year-old in a movie. And with art, with music, you know what I'm saying? At times, like, hey, I might not, might, I might not be doing exactly that no more, but I'm going to cater to the audience in the time that's going to be most equivalent to be attracted to the art of the music. You know what I'm saying? Drake put a lot of good songs on this album. Uh, got replay value. We know that. Whether and, and that's one thing with me. Whether I'm listening to your album all day or not, I know how to look at music and tell if people fucking with it. Is it getting talked about? You do hear a lot of people giving it those critiques, 
but it's still a lot of people that said, hey, man, this is the baddest shit out right now. So I, I can I can understand what Rory is saying to a sense like, hey, this I wanted to hear this from Drake. I wanted to hear this, this the where Drake is living right now at this age. You know what I'm saying? How he feeling about shit. And you can't compare Drake to other artists because he's shown like that perfect balance of doing the rapping and singing together and making hits and being a superstar. And that's what put him in that top tier category where, hey, nigga, I can actually go out here, tap in on a song with an independent, hot, underground street artist, but then I can get in my R&B bag, then I can get into some rap, a rap bag on, on niggas, you know what I'm saying? Or I can do a God's plan, or I can do a uh, Tusi slide, or I can do a hotline bling. It's like the when the versatility so high, it's kind of like, well, damn, bro, where do where does he go from here? What's the never what's the next step? And I guess a lot of people were looking like, what's that next step? And he just kept it cool and smooth and kept it like, hey nigga, I'ma just give these people what I've been doing and what I what they what I feel that they want and what they gonna vibe to the most. So at the end of the day, it's a win-win for everybody. As far as the Rory and Mall podcast, this topic right here is gonna get some conversation going. And that's what podcasts is supposed to do, man. So we'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure Drake might respond to it in a little slick way. We'll see. Tell me what y'all think about this shit, man. Hit the dislike button, like button, however the fuck you feel about it. Tell me what y'all think about Drake album and everything of that nature. And like I said, I like talking about these little type of situations because it, it's all harm. It's all it's, it's harmless. It's harmless. They're making these comments. Nothing bad is going to happen. It's entertainment. Tap in, subscribe to the channel, stay on your pivot for shit show. 1,000.